Gospel Hour, making known to this nation the gospel of Jesus Christ. Stay tuned for today's message that was preached and recorded by the founder of the Gospel Hour, Evangelist Dr. Oliver B. Green. And now, here with our message, Oliver B. Green. Father, the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Father who said, This is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. The Father who raised up Jesus from the dead. It's in thy name, kind Heavenly Father, that we plead the blood and claim victory today. I pray that you'll save the man or the woman, the boy or the girl that's nearest hell, and we'll give God the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Romans 2, 11 says, God is no respecter of persons. Now, I'm quoting that because I'm going to read in the Bible about a person who died. And since we are talking about the adventure after death, what happens when a person draws their last breath, when the blood stops flowing through the veins, when the heart lies still in the bosom, and when the lungs no longer function, when a person has drawn that last gasp of breath, what happens? Where do they go? What do they do? Can we know? Romans 2.11, God is no respecter of persons. Now, in Acts, we find in chapter 6, that the church had grown to the place where it was necessary to appoint deacons to take care of the widows and the orphans and the secondary things so that the disciples could spend all of their time preaching the word. Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit, was chosen one of the first deacons in the church. Now, he was a man apt to teach, apt to preach. He was full of the Holy Ghost. And he was a man that knew God and served God with all of his heart and the Lord Jesus Christ. He preached a sermon in Acts chapter 7 that made the fellows mad who hated Jesus. He preached a sermon how that they had killed the prophet and had murdered and all of that, and it made them mad. Now, in verse 54 of Acts 7, I want you to listen to the account of the Word of God. And bless your soul, if you call this a parable, or if you call this a vision, then I want to say, bless your heart. You've shut the door in your face. I can't help you. Nobody else can help you. The Bible can't help you. And until you're willing to open your mind, until you're willing to let God open your mind, I say it humbly, I say it reverently, I say it in the fear of God, until you're willing to let God open your mind, God can't help you. God can't help a person with a closed mind. Peter says that they are willingly ignorant. They don't want to know any better. They refuse to know any better. And they refuse to listen. They have a closed mind. Now, please don't close your mind. But listen to this. When Stephen finished his sermon in verse 53 of Acts 7, verse 54, when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. They actually bit him. They chewed on him. They bit him. Now listen. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven. He looked up. He didn't look down to the grave. He wasn't expecting to enter a grave. He was not expecting to go to sleep or unconscious. Now listen. He looked up. He looked up steadfastly and saw the glory of God. He saw the glory of God. Well, now you say, Mr. Green, you just quoted Romans 2.11, that God is no respecter of persons. Do you know anybody else, Mr. Green, that's ever seen the glory of God? I'm speaking right now to hundreds of godly parents and mothers who know for a surety that when your mother died, when your dad died, when your old godly granddaddy died, when your old godly grandmother died, 
or when some good godly Christian died. You know as well as I do that they testify that it's getting light. They hear sweet music. Oh, yes. I know a good godly saint that will testify on this program if I should call them that the night their mother died, this dear person said they absolutely heard the rustling of the angels in the room. Now, I know some of you shrug your shoulders. That's all right. Go ahead and shrug them. I know some of you say, uh, that's silly. That's all right. Go ahead. Go ahead. When my dad died, just shortly before he passed away, just a few hours, a couple of hours before he locked arms with the angels and went to paradise, my mother, they were sleeping in the early morning, and my dad woke up my mother, and when she looked at him, she said he was reaching up just as hard as he could, had his arms stretched up toward the ceiling just as high as he could reach. You know what dad was reaching for? He's reaching for the angels hovering just above his bed. That's all right. That's all right. You go right ahead. I'm reading the Bible. I'm going to read to you. The Bible says that Stephen looked into heaven. He saw the glory of God. He didn't see God. No man has seen God at any time. No man. Let me get back. Listen, how many of you, dear people, if you would, you could write me a letter right now and testify that your old saint, your mother, daddy, whoever it was, testified that they heard sweet music, heard sweet voices, and it's getting light, and don't worry about me. Things are beginning to brighten up. I'm going home. You know it's the truth. You know as well as I do. Listen, dying men don't lie. Now, I was in a certain place. I'm not going to name it. I wouldn't hurt anybody. God knows I don't want to hurt anybody. It's bad enough for a family to know that one of their loved ones died without God. God knows I wouldn't hurt anybody that's lost a loved one. But I was in a certain city, and a nurse that I knew took care of a man who died a horrible death. He'd been a terrible sinner. And this dear nurse told my wife and I, she said, God deliver me from ever witnessing that again. She said, that dear man ran from the devil for hours before the devil finally caught him and drug him away. That dear nurse said, oh, God, please don't ever let me have to nurse a man that dies like that again. I could sit right here at this microphone, and I could tell you for the rest of the time that I have on the radio today about case after case where people have died with smiles on their faces, with praises on their lips, testifying that they're listening to sweet music. It's getting light. It's getting bright. The angels are coming for me. And on the other hand, some who've screamed and begged to be pulled up out of the fire. My feet's getting hot. Pull me up. I'm taking a leap into the dark. And I could just keep on, just keep on going. But I don't have the time on the radio today. I want to show you what happened to Stephen. I can tell you these stories, and you can say, well, that's just a bunch of green gospel. But I can read you this blessed Bible, and that's God Almighty's gospel, not mine. Now listen. So Stephen looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Is that a parable? Is that a parable? Is that a parable? All right, if that's a parable, I'll tell you where there's another one. When Jesus entered the water to be baptized, the Holy Ghost descended in the form of a dove and remained upon him. Now, is that a parable? No, that's an actual account. Jesus was literally baptized. The Holy Ghost literally descended. The Holy Ghost remained upon him in the form of a dove. The Bible says so. God said in an audible voice, This is my beloved Son. It happened. It's real. It's genuine. Stephen was a man full of faith, full of the Holy Ghost. He was God's first deacon. They chewed on him. They gnashed on him. Now listen. And said, listen, he saw Jesus and announced it. Listen. In verse 56, and said, behold, I see the heavens open. God opened the heavens. And the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Well, God didn't open a tomb or a grave for Stephen, did he? No, Stephen didn't say, Behold, I see a grave wide open. Uh-uh, no. He said, Behold, I see heaven 
I see the heavens. You see, H-E-A-V-E-N-S. The two first heavens opened up to Stephen. The heaven where the clouds are. The heaven where the stars are. Those heavens roll back. And Stephen saw into the third heaven where Paul said the man was caught up into paradise. So Stephen saw into the third heaven, and he saw the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Now Jesus positionally is seated, but when Stephen was about to be stoned to death, the Son of God stood up to witness his homecoming. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It doesn't make any difference to me what anybody says, what anybody teaches, what anybody preaches. When I leave this old body, praise God, I'm going where Stephen is. Amen. Now then, I belong to the same church he did. I belong to the same body he did. I have in me the same Holy Spirit he had. I love the same Jesus he loved. I'm preaching the same gospel he preached. And praise God, when I come down to die, I'm not going to take a fitful leap into an unconscious grave, but praise God, I'm going to take my trip to the paradise in the third heaven, and I'm going to rest with Jesus until the day when he gives me my glorified body, and then I'll reign with him throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity. All right, so Stephen said, I see the heavens open. I see the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice, stopped their ears, ran upon him in one court, and cast him out of the city. They drug him out of the city, they cast him out of the city, threw him out of the city, and stoned him, and the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, what did he say? What did Stephen say? Are you listening? Do you have your Bible by the radio? What did Stephen say? Did he say, Lord Jesus, I thank you that I'm going to be unconscious now until the resurrection. I thank you that I'm going to a grave and I'm going back to dust and I won't know anything and I'll be unconscious. Did he say that? They stoned Stephen calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit, not my body. No, Jesus, you don't want this old body. They've already beat it with rocks. It's no good, Jesus. They've beaten the life out of this old body. This old body's bloody, it's swollen. But Lord, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Mm-hmm. Fell asleep. What fell asleep? His body. The body, the eyes closed. The body went to sleep. Stephen's spirit went to the Lord to whom it belonged. Ecclesiastes 12, 7. The body goes back to dust. The spirit to the Lord who gave it. Stephen saw Jesus. He was looking at him. He had his eyes on him. Heaven was open. The way was wide open. No obstructions. Nothing to hinder. Praise God. He said, Jesus, receive my spirit. And the inner man, the immortal part of Stephen, the part of Stephen that's still alive, still conscious, resting, went to Jesus. The body, I do not know what they did with it. They might have buried it. They might have thrown it in the incinerator. I do not know. But the body of Stephen didn't matter anyhow because it was beaten and bloody. God gave up flesh in the Garden of Eden, but God promised salvation for the immortal soul, and God Almighty sent Jesus to die to save our souls from death, not our bodies. Our bodies are destined to go back to dust. Jesus will not repair the body. He's going to give us a brand new body, a brand new body just like his own glorious body, when he comes to receive us, to receive the living in the rapture. The dead in Christ will be raised first, the bodies. Then we which are alive will be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air.
Now, beloved, don't tell me that God took Stephen to be with Jesus and lets all of his other children go to the grave. I don't believe it. I don't believe my God is that kind of a God. My God is no respecter of persons. When Stephen sealed his testimony with the blood of his body, God parted the heavens. Stephen looked right straight into paradise, into heaven. He saw the glory of God. Where's God? In my Father's house. God's in heaven. He saw the glory of God. He saw Jesus standing. And he looked up at Jesus and he said, Jesus, receive my spirit. And Jesus received his spirit. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord instantaneously. No time element, no waiting, it's immediately. To be absent from the body, present with the Lord. Paul said, I have a desire to depart from the body. I, Paul, have a desire to leave the body. The body, that's not Paul, that's where Paul lived. I have a desire to leave the body and to be present with the Lord, which would be far better. But he said to the Philippians, it is needful for you that I remain in the body. Now, thank God, though this tabernacle be dissolved, we have a building of God eternal in the heavens, not made with hands. And thank God when a saint, when a Christian dies, they don't go to a grave. They don't go unconscious. They don't go to sleep unconsciously asleep. But they go to be with Jesus the split second they die. Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Behold, I see the heavens open. I see the glory of God. I see Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Jesus Receive my spirit. Is that a parable? Is that a story? Or did Stephen live? Did Stephen die? Was Stephen stoned? You know he was, and that's a Bible fact. Now, the thing that I want to leave with you today is this. My friend, some of you are more concerned about where the dead are than you are about where you're going when you die. Now, wherever the dead are and whatever the dead are doing, you have a date with death, and you are going to die. Now, I beg you today, I plead with you from the very depths of my soul, I beg you, if you're not prepared to die, accept the Savior that Stephen knew. Believe on him, receive him, and be saved now. Bow your head. Tell the Lord that you know that you're a sinner. Ask Jesus to come into your heart. And praise God, he'll come in. He'll come in today. He'll come in to stay. Yes, he'll come in to go with you through the valley of the shadow of death. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. If the dead go to the grave, if the dead go into a grave and go unconscious, then David was mistaken when he said, I walk through the valley, through, not into, but through. The valley of the shadow of death, I'll not be afraid, for thou art with me. Now, if you'll give your heart to Jesus, you have nothing to dread, you have nothing to fear. But if you refuse to give your heart to Jesus then death is a leap into everlasting weeping, wailing, and gnashing of teeth. Heavenly Father, save the soul that's nearest hell today for Jesus' sake. And may the children of God rejoice and be exceedingly glad because Jesus died to take the fear out of death. It's in his name we pray. Amen.